Yes, so um, welcome to a Women in Engineering webinar today. I'm so delighted to have an expert panel with us today. We've got Stephanie Slocum from Engineers Rising. Hi, Stephanie. And we've got Paris Small from Jaguar Land Rover. So um, it's one of uh, many webinars we're doing. We're really focusing on um, women in STEM, but also other industries. We're, we're focusing on how women can be more visible and access careers that perhaps haven't been an option and available to them. So we're gonna, the main part of the webinar today is our Q&A session. So we've got our panel here, we've got some questions that have already been sent in, which is great. Um, so I'll just get started with a quick agenda. So I'm gonna talk really briefly about what Jobs for Women is, which is essentially a community of women, a little overview of women in engineering, and then our guest panel will introduce themselves, talk about their background um, in engineering. And then, as I say, we'll go straight to the Q&A. So Jobs for Women, we are all about women. Commun we're a community of ambitious, like-minded women who share common attributes and passions um, to make a change. Um, I am a woman who, has worked in corporate, big corporate companies. And the idea for Jobs for Women came to me ages ago when I was in an internship role for a really large uh, TV and film company. And um, my manager at the time had just had a promotion and she pulled me into the stairwell and said, Zoe, nobody talks about salaries, um, but I'm gonna be just really transparent with you. I have been offered this promotion, which I'm really happy about. And if I was a man, I would have been offered 10,000 pounds more. And it was like my first wake up and experience of the gender pay gap and um, the gender inequality in the workplace. And it's like this idea formed. And obviously as a woman in business, I've experienced misogyny, you know, comments on the way I look. Um, and I think a lot of women can relate. So this, this idea has been building, but the foundation of Jobs for Women is the community of women, um, eventually offering mentorship and, and just bringing women together to share their experiences. So we've got a weekly podcast and a newsletter, eventually our jobs board, and then we've got these webinars, which are proving such a brilliant way to start building the community and start really sparking some conversation, conversation that really does need to happen. Um, so loads of good stuff is coming out of the webinars um, and obviously we're recording them so that we um, people can revisit them. So Women in Engineering, Engineering UK, I'm not gonna read everything word for word because you'll get a copy of the slides, but Engineering UK states that 16.5% of those working in engineering are female. So it has increased since 2010 when it was 10.5%, but women are only making up 11% of the sector in the UK. We've got the lowest percentage of females um, in Europe. Um, I thought it was interesting that only 20% of A-level student, physics students are female and it's not changed for 25 years. So I thought that's another area that we need to delve into perhaps, you know, speak to the unis and find out what messaging, um, you know, they're putting out for their courses. Um, only 12% of students taking computer science A-levels are girls. 5% um, of leadership positions um, in the tech engineering sector are held by women. And I thought it was interesting that the it, engineering is the most common undergraduate degree of the 40 fortune 500 ceos um i also read that um we've got our first president elect of the institute of physics and engineering and medicine dr anna barnes who goes into position in 2023 seems crazy that it's the first woman but at the same time i'm not surprised so with that quick overview, I'm going to introduce our panel. We've got Stephanie Slocum from Engineers Rising, as I said, and Paris Small Software Engineering Degree Apprentice at Land Rover, at Jaguar Land Rover, sorry. So Stephanie, am I okay to hand over to you? Do you want to give us a, an introduction? Welcome, welcome. Go right ahead. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Okay, so I am Stephanie Slocum. As you can probably tell by my voice, I am based in the United States. Um, and my background is in architectural engineering, which many people were like, I've never heard of that engineering degree. Uh, so I have a bachelor's and master's in that. I worked in the, the design of building structures. So essentially I designed the part of buildings that held them up uh, for 15 years. And then um, I ended up writing a book to help 
other women succeed in this field. And that ended up launching a business where now I, I get to help women like you succeed in the workplace. And so I'm super focused on retention issues and helping organizations retain and engage their women. Um, I also do some one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. Um, and so that business is four years old. And then I'm also a mom. So I have three kids. Uh, we have, uh, I have a 13 year old, a 10 year old and a seven year old, uh, all girls. And so I'm extra passionate about this issue because um, I wanna help be the change that we need to see. Because when I entered the industry, I was a bit blindsided by, by some of the things that went on. I hadn't really encountered a lot of um, maybe poor attitudes towards women when I was in university, college. Um, it wasn't until I got out into the workforce that I really was like, oh my goodness, I'm getting treated differently than I'm seeing my male counterparts and how can I overcome that? Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited to share some, some ways you can do that, some uh, ways to get started in your career or figure things out. And so I'm just happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, I just had a little technical. Are you there? That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I think you've got so much incredible experience that you can really pass on. And that's like, it's exciting to know that you're doing mentoring and, and coaching as well. Thank you so much. So Paris, can I hand over to you to introduce yourself? Yes. Hello. Hi, I'm Paris Small. I'm at the start of my career, early careers. I'm a software engineering degree apprentice. So if you don't know what degree apprenticeship is, it's basically um, I'm getting a degree, bachelor's in science, but I'm also just most of my time working. So the split is 80%. I'm working for a company, Jaguar Land Rover, automotive in, um, industry, but I'm not necessarily doing automotive engineering. It's more software based. And 20% of my time, I am studying my bachelor's um, at the University of Warwick. So in the UK, it's actually a top 10 university as a really good thing for STEM. Um, WMG is a really good group there and yeah so that's what I'm doing software engineering specifically in the company I work in the um, electrification department with all the electric vehicles and hybrids I do get to actually go hands-on with them but also mostly is kind of the technical aspect so the software engineering of that so with engineering like Stephanie said engineering in general you've got so many different aspects as not necessarily the electrical engineer or manufacturing engineer or um, a um, What's mechanical engineer, software engineering, I spend a lot of my time actually behind the computer, but also hands on in the vehicle as well, making sure that what's going on there is working in that aspect. So, yeah, it's a four year course. I leave it with four years work experience at a good company and also a degree that I haven't had to pay for. It's paid for by the company and the government. So it's definitely a benefit. And it's a lot of degree apprenticeships that I know. My specific course is Digital Technology Solutions. It's offered all around the UK not necessarily just for um, automotive industry. I've got a couple of friends that work for BT, Vodafone, all these different companies that offer the same course that you can do um, on an engineering degree that is basically paid for. You obviously are getting a salary as well because you're working most of your time and also you get that experience. So a degree apprenticeship is definitely a good way of getting in. And there's loads of different ones in the engineering space. But yeah, so I just touch a bit on when I started in 2019, obviously as an apprentice, apprentices, there's that narrative that you kind of obviously you come in quite low as early careers. But as I've worked through the company for four years now, my manager's given me my own responsibility to lead my own team delivering a new future. And that's just because as an apprentice, I'm there most of my time and I'm really learning from the ground up. So it's a good opportunity to get in like and kind of really really shape your career and once you've got once you've got your degree you're finishing and whether you want to stay at the company or go to a different company you've already got that work experience and the skills knowledges behaviors etc my spare time I'm also an ambassador for stem careers which is why I think um, though, I'm grateful to be here today because I speak to a lot of um students and um uh, like co-16 which is like a-level students and 16 year old college students for Stephanie um that you'd know that really kind of just want some guidance because like you said it's a male dominated field they don't really kind of 
no one wants them. They kind of just want a role model to go into kind of, okay, how are you doing? What are you doing? So I've created some social media platforms, speak to quite a lot of A-level students, quite a lot, help them with their CVs, want to get into apprenticeships, want to get into STEM careers, and just really kind of want to make that change from now at the start of my career. Because when I was applying, one of the main things was kind of almost, yeah, you'll get that apprenticeship. Obviously, you're a woman, they need women, but it's like that imposter syndrome. I don't want the job because I'm a woman. I want the job because I deserve the job. Um, so getting women to and young um, students to basically see that you can do the role and you're not just kind of a tick box exercise with there. And it's actually data that proves diverse teams thrive more, specifically with women, women um, managers and leaders, certain aspects of fields, they um, produce kind of better areas in engineering and in certain different spaces as well. So it makes sense to have women in your team hiring women and because they deserve the role, not just to fill a quota. So I'm here just for support for that, and yeah, got got a bit, got a bit of waffle on there, but yeah. That was a, that was that was brilliant. Thank you, Paris. You you hit on some amazing points then that is really coming up as well. It's like I want the job because I'm really good, you know, I, not just because I'm a woman and it's a tick box exercise. Mm -hmm. um, your degree sounds fantastic. I am going to um, so we're going to move straight into Q and A now. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, just so for the recording, um, it's not just sharing that slide. Um, so it's much better when people are watching it back. So, wow, so much to talk about. I, I just want to launch into straight away. Obviously, um, Paris, you talked about the work you're doing, um, you know, helping, even what you said about CVs and, and, and being a presence for people. I'm curious, like that's your experience. So I'm going to jump straight to Stephanie. So comparing... Paris is sort of early experience, like she's, you know, she's having this course that's, you know, there's a more of a drive to have women in engineering. How does that compare to when you began your career? Is it, is there, has there been a massive shift? Um, so I actually don't think there has been. I think the shift is accelerated. I think yeah. that, so when I, and it's funny, I was like starting to laugh when Paris, you commented about, oh, people saying, oh, you'll have no problem finding a job. They need women. But like that narrative has not changed <laughs> in the last like 20 years ish. Um, and so it's, yeah, I, I've heard, I've been hearing the narrative for decades about we need more women. We need more women. Um, and to tag on to that, like there, they actually do have research now that shows like all the different leadership competencies women bring to the table. Um, there is an article, I think, in Forbes, it's like my favorite one ever, that they're like, women actually have objectively um, more, more leadership competencies, usually naturally, than guys do. Yet, when we look at who's in charge of all of our tech and engineering companies, um, it's usually guys. Um, and so, it, yeah, people have been saying they want women for a while, yet the behaviors and I we are definitely seeing a shift and definitely like more awareness of this um but like when I started it was much more of a you know you're you're trying to fit in with the work environment where you as a woman feel like you don't fit now I wish I could say that fast forward to now and it's you know completely different and we are more kind of allowing everybody to show up as themselves at work um, the reality is I talk to women every day that that is not the case for them. Um, and so the analogy I like to use here is like, you know, most of us, if we're looking for our lifelong partner, we don't marry the first person we meet, right? And so for most of us, like trying out different jobs, sometimes trying out different like sectors and realizing that whatever degree, engineering degree you have, it, it's like it opens the door to all sorts of other things. Um, I loved your statistic about the Fortune 500 CEOs having engineering because I, I really feel like, um, and my engineering degree, so I worked in a field where it's very much a meld of technical and non-technical. Um, I worked my way up to an executive level position in that field before I founded my own company. And I was very, very client facing. And so like, it was a perfect meld for me of being able to do a lot of communication, working with a lot of clients, working, like seeing the things that I had designed, built and standing there and working on like infrastructure projects. Um, and, you know, I have friends that went a very technical route 
And I have friends that completely pivoted engineering industries from infrastructure to tech. Some of them are in public policy now. And so like your engineering degree, it's like a gateway to uh, bigger and better things. I think like having that support around you, whether it's role models or people that have your back is like the critical missing link for a lot of people that drives them out of the out of the industry. Wow, that's a great answer. And I think um, it's it's like knowing, you know, like when you're at that point in your career where you're either deciding what course to do or you're thinking about, you know, what career, it's knowing that it doesn't have to be linear and that maybe the communication to to women needs to to change, that it it can be a career and a vast career. And like you say, you can go into loads of different areas. Yeah. Um, and it's like Paris, you were saying, you know, you're in this particular area now and you don't know where your career will go, but it's opened up this window. But then, you know, it might lead on to um, a totally different, a different path. Um, something that has been coming up um, when I've been speaking um, in the research for this webinar, that um, some women in the industry have said that it might be still seen as a get your hands dirty industry, which is a bit of a misconception. Do you think? companies or universities could do more to dispel the myth or or show engineering in a different light yeah i think one of the main things and it's not changed same with stem stem with apprenticeship it's kind of almost um you hear the word engineer and you've got a persona of a man in some type of work uniform like you said getting your hands dirty and you hear the word apprentice and you think blue collar industry kind of Kind of the low, those low level job roles but it's actually not the case and i think what companies universities can really do is really showing maybe day in the life of what uh, an apprentice or an engineer looks like for different roles different sectors social media is everything nowadays and not just necessarily social media like instagram but like linkedin or blogs of people actually talk about what they actually do the amount of times someone will come up to me also you're a software engineer what do you actually do and i tell them and they're like wow i didn't realize that you could kind of do that or that was something that i could do and it's like yeah um it actually is and just a lot of because i speak for like um early careers because i'm an early career a lot of people that i speak to don't know and won't apply to something unless they've already spoke to someone kind of what they're doing and they're kind of, okay that's kind of cool they won't just put their cv in for a job role and kind of hope for the best so having those kind of role models, people like us actually like what you're doing, Zoe, and posting about this is a role that you can actually do, engineering and this, and have like engineering is so wide. When you say engineer, you could be an engineer for so much, so many different types of things. So going out there and actually having people in different roles talking about what they actually do in a closed space, posting on social medias, LinkedIn, blogs, doing webinars like this, actually getting to speak to people. So young students and other people in their careers that want to go into engineering actually understand what they can actually do that's my opinion. yeah that's 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 um that's a great answer because it's i mean often when you're in the early stages of your career you'll see these big brand names these big companies and you're just you know a lot of us i mean that's a whole other webinar talking about how women you know we traditionally won't put ourselves up for promotions we won't apply for a job unless we hit every bullet point on the job spec that's a whole other um you know massive conversation yeah. um but yeah it's almost like breaking down those barriers and those walls like actually you can reach out to these companies but if these companies like you say are proactively saying look this is what um a degree apprentice looks like and you know so that you can sort of see yourself in that role so yeah there's loads more that they can be done um can't there uh, thank you for that. Um, Stephanie, I wanted to, I really wanted to talk to you more about engineers rising. I, I mean, I've done some research and what you're doing is amazing. There's a lot coming through about that mentorship and that community aspect. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about why you set it up and what you're working on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I started, I mean, honestly, the company started as almost a, a bucket list item I had to write a book that kind of summarized all the things that I was mentoring and helping other people with. Um, and so like for you know anyone listening, I think the idea of like following your curiosity wherever your path goes um, it is a super common theme in my my career. And I think some of the most interesting people I know in any field, like that that piece is how you get to a place where you're like, yes, I love everything about my work and I'm excited to show up for work every day. Um, and so uh, I started with a book and then I have uh, ran into like group 
group programs because I realized that, you know, some of this path can be very lonely. And I think most women, like when you go into an engineering field, like you, you have a really good work ethic. Uh, you do not survive <laughs> university without one. Um, and not, not if you're majoring in engineering. Uh, and, and you have this idea that like, I can, I can do this. If I just work harder, I'll make, I'll make, it'll work. Uh, yet that becomes very lonely and you can have this like lack of support. Um, I also had all, always thought, oh, well, if I just work hard, my hard work will stand for itself. I didn't know how to do things like negotiate my salary. <laughs> Paris, I loved your story from earlier there. Um, and so I wanted to create a place where uh, both individual women could come if they were frustrated and wanted to learn all these skills, you know, negotiations, speaking up for yourselves. Like, how do you, you know, put yourself in a place where you can get the high profile projects that you really want to work on, as well as for companies um, that care about advancing and retaining women. Uh, one of the stats you didn't show. So, um, at least in the U.S., 40% of the women that graduate with engineering degrees drop out of engineering, which is a really, like, if you really think about that, that means that they invested all that time and effort and energy getting the degree. And some of them even ended up working in the field and then they left. And so that's really the problem I'm super focused on solving. Um, and a big piece of that is helping people understand that, you know, all of us have had one or two or three or 10 bad experiences. <laughs> and so recognizing that it's not you, uh, you know, and the unique skills, gifts, and talents you bring to this field that we really, really need. Um, I really want to help women rise up through the ranks of their firms and be successful because I really do think how we solve this problem is more women in positions of power, period. Yeah. That's that's a soundbite right there. We just clipped that bit. That's amazing. <laughs> um, that's interesting. Then, so it's twofold. So essentially, it's like working with the companies to 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 help stop that retention. Um, is sorry, stop the women, you know, leaving. Is there anything on those stats that say why is it like burnout, male dominated industry, or is it a collection of everything? No flexible working kids. Did a little of all of the above. <laughs> now, it's, it's complicated. I do want to bust one myth because I feel like well, even and this has not changed either. That when I talk to people, okay, why don't we have more? Why why is the retention rate as bad as it is? Why has the retention rate not like even as we've brought more and more women into the field, like more people are graduating with those degrees, the retention, the percentage of women retained has not changed. In some sectors, it's actually gone down. Um, and so in the last 20 years, so since I graduated from college, um, so it is a, like, we, we can do something about this, um, but it's moving yourself around to figure out where, <laughs> where you fit. Um, and I sometimes see like all of people come and say, oh, I had this bad experience in a job. And now I think I'm not cut out for the industry again. Like if that happens, if that's happened to anyone that's watching this, if you're concerned about, you know, that might happen to you, it's not you. It's the organization. Find a new job, find mentors, find support. There are organizations out there that will support you. Um, it's just a matter of finding them. And I've also had the experience where it's like, you know, this, this is a good organization, but it just doesn't fit me. Mm. And so I, I think that's a, a another piece of the puzzle that, um, Again, I, I like to use I like the dating analogy uh, because none of us would think that we meet the one person that we're going to be with forever. And it's the first person. Yet we <laughs> do that with our jobs all the time. One or two. Oh, I'm done. And so I we really need um, the specific gifts and talents that women are more likely to bring um, to the field. Um, I mean, engineering is all about teaching you kind of a, a way of thinking of problem solving, of applying that technical skill set in the benefit of society and the world. And I think, you know, going back to the question you asked Paris, I think connecting those two things, because like when I was coming up through school, it was all about, oh, you have to love math and science. Let me tell you, math was actually my lowest grade <laughs> all the way up through high school. 
um, it did go up in college once I got into my major and it was much more applied versus theoretical. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a way of thinking and of problem solving. And so I think we there does need to be a little bit of a, I don't know, let's well, say rebranding of what engineers are, what engineers do, because it's not, you know, a person sitting in a garage with their hoodie coding by themselves. <laughs> um, I mean, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. My engineering career was very social <laughs> in terms of meeting people and talking to people and doing all those things. And, and there's paths for everybody. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, there, and it's so nice to know that there are paths for everyone. And, you, you know, like you just saying that maths wasn't your strongest. Um, and again, as women, um, you know, we're, if if someone is maybe a little bit unconfident and then maybe won't put themselves forward for engineering because they're thinking I need to be amazing at maths then it's like breaking down those barriers as well so Paris when so you're obviously in um final year now at what point I'm really curious did you know about engineering as a career was it when you were at school or a levels or yeah do you remember? So I obviously did my kind of GCSEs which is like high school definitely yeah and then and my granddad lives in america so i always have to cr cross over what the voc like, language is here and there <laughs> and then when i did my um kind of a levels which is the two years before you actually get into college i was doing maths physics and computer science and i know in the uk it's a lot a lot more difficult because i know when you're going through like it was so quite like a levels here they were harder than basically all of my university i'm not going to lie it was very very Fourth, fourth, like you said, and then when I got to university, it was a lot more applied. It was a lot more okay. Do you refer? You could research. Do you papers and research? So when I was in A levels, I was like, okay, I know I wanted to go into um, some type of STEM career. Um, English, even though I did well in it, it wasn't really kind of for me. And my mum was always in my ear, like engineering, engineering, engineering. And I was just like, in my head, I had that bias. I was like, I don't want to be an engineer. Like I don't see any positive things about it. There's nobody that looks like me in like senior positions. Um, so why would I put myself through that? And then I looked into kind of degree of and it was like software engineering. I was like, okay, did a bit of research. And even like what Stephanie said, I don't code 24 seven. I don't sit on my laptop behind a screen and code, but I do get involved with additional things like speed clients, business cases, all these different things that you can do. And I was like, you know what, actually, this is more interested in, interesting for me. So I applied after I finished my A-level, took a gap year and traveled, got onto it. And then it wasn't honestly until probably year one or two of the course that I'm on now I was like you know what actually yeah I was kind of doing this because I knew I needed to do something like I finished I was in my gap year I couldn't really kind of now I didn't want to just go into the job that I was at full time so I did it kind of applied and now it's like actually engineering what I'm in specifically engineering tech engineering specifically is a role that I could definitely see myself kind of pro progressing in purely just because the space I've been put in the people I've been able to network with it's like I didn't realize you could do that and it's like you connect with them and you see what they're doing and it's like wow I want to get involved <laughs> and you can actually because it's not just like your normal not nine to five but you actually have working experience meeting people going to events seeing what they're doing and actually being like okay this is good because you can still build that professional personal development on the weekends and on the in the evenings and go on like you said in the career field so I would say literally probably when I was on this course but I'm hoping that it changes because I know like you said when I was in my physics class and my computer science class, it was literally me and two, three other people that were women. So the hope is that people like us can be role models because it starts way before that, because in the UK, women or students have to choose their A-levels GCSEs in like year nine, which is like grade mm -hmm. grade eight. Um, so by then they've already decided. So once they're in like their grades, for like doing their GCSEs, if they've not picked math, physics, science, they're not going to go really into a career in engineering. So it's really targeting those younger from like seven, six, seven, eight here to actually, this is what you can actually do with work, especially with the women and the young girls there so that they can actually see, because if they don't pick an A-level in a math, physics, science, the likelihood is they're not going to get into an engineering type course or a STEM course at university. And the likely people that people can obviously career change later on in life, but we're trying to target like young people from now. So it's mm -hmm. just about kind of being, being role models for people, which is kind of like why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, like and the career, everything else. <laughs> yeah. Multitasking, yeah, the careers yeah. Um, advice is really important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I remember when I was at college, um, 
any sort of course site engineering was just not even, <coughs> excuse yeah. me, mentioned. Um, I just wanted to jump back to one point, Paris, just quickly, when your mum said engineering, because mm -hmm. what I'm finding as well is um, we had a, an amazing uh, woman on yesterday um, in our Women in Tech, and she said she had the opposite, her family. She was the first in a family to have a professional job and a degree, and they were saying, no, no, tech, no, tech is for men. And mm -hmm. she said she had to really stick with her passion. Mm -hmm. So you, did you have some encouragement from your mum? Yeah, yeah, I think um i was just like oh i don't know i don't know and she was like engineering 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 in the back of her head purely just because she knows she's obviously raised for me she knows kind of like my success and what i can do and she um just from like being in the industry she's not in um, a stem field but just from people that she's known like the gap there is for kind of successful women in the industry mm -hmm. she said like she kind of almost was like you want to I want you to kind of be the change so you can actually go out and say you know what and then hopefully that's not that gap of successful women not that there isn't loads because there is but not enough that we want to see to be able to encourage young people to actually go out and uh, apply for it so she was in my ear kind of doing that but it took a while for her to be doing that for me to actually kind of listen to her <laughs> because I just had that bias like engineering like mm, not really, but then when I actually did my own research, it was actually like, no, actually, yeah, I can kind of definitely see a role in this. So I think it's definitely important because schools, like you said, schools, parents, friends, they all make a decision on what kind of college you're applying mm -hmm. to, what university you're going, what course you're studying. And if they're not kind of supportive, then it also puts that barrier there. So it's about changing everyone's minds, not just kind yeah. of young people, parents, teachers. A lot of teachers would be like, oh, engineering or oh, mm -hmm. an apprenticeship. So it's, definitely a lot that you've had, like I've had to fight through so having in, having mentors and um, role models makes it easier for people definitely yeah yeah definitely um and Stephanie I um, something I just wanted to talk about I know you have to go soon um you talk about leadership concepts mm -hmm. on your website and in, in the yeah. book as being similar in theory and you say that in reality if a woman acts like um a man in the exact same situation she's punished and I've done a lot of reading around this as well and read a lot of uh, anecdotes and 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 references about you know when women were in male dominated industries in the early days they were sort of trying to be more like a man and I just wanted to know a bit more about how this might affect female engineers looking to move into leadership you know how are we going to increase leadership can you talk to us about yeah. that yeah so um again i think things are changing but i would say first from a like an individual level trying to be someone you're not is is a battle you're not going to win right it's just going to mm -hmm. make you miserable and so i think like it's it's walking the line between okay like what do i how do i need to show up to you know be a leader in my current position so i can get get to the next one but then also being like, OK, like this is just who I am <laughs> and how I am and really focusing on like what kind of outcomes are you delivering in your role? Um, so one of the biggest challenges. So, you know, along with the stereotype about engineering and math and, you know, you just have to be really good at or you just have to be really, be really good at physics and math to go be an engineer to tag along with that. There's this all the whole thing about like, you know, engineers not getting a lot of training in management and communication and so when women do not know very clearly like what are the expectations for my role what are the expectations for me to get to the next role how can i deliver my outcomes in a way that's pretty unambiguous if you don't know that then it's really easy for bias to get in the way of you getting promoted and you advancing and all of those things when you know that and can demonstrate that, hey, like I'm meeting all my stuff to get to the next level, um, I've done all the things to get promoted. When you can like say that in object in an um, objective way, I feel like your leadership style doesn't matter. Um, but the 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 challenge is, and I've definitely seen this in some of the places I worked, when those outcomes aren't really clear, then the leadership styles win which means that you're, the people that get promoted are more likely to look like the people who are already at the top because we all have, me included, this bias towards people who are like us. Um, mm -hmm. And so I remember interviewing, you know, young women would come in for 
um, in the U.S. we have like summer internships, and mm -hmm. um, and so it's like a three month, and then they go to school, and then uh, three months. And I would be interviewing young women coming in for internships, and I'd automatically feel this affinity towards them because I'm like, this is awesome. We need more women. Um, and, and so it, like it goes both ways. But I think more women in leadership roles isn't about like it's good to know that if I try and negotiate my salary, it's more likely I'm going to get backlash than the guy doing it. It's just good mm -hmm. to be aware of that only because then you're like, OK, it's not me. I need to make sure I practice and know what I'm doing before I go into this situation so that I'm comfortable doing it. Um, but on the same token, I, I you don't need to change yourself to come up. You just need to know what are the outcomes, be able to demonstrate that you are meeting all of those um, and then keep on asking to get promoted, to go to the next level. Um, and know that if there's no one there that looks like you in that high level leadership role, maybe you're supposed to be that person. You're supposed to be that person for the next group. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so interesting because um, again, if there's 40%, I know that was a statistic from the US of, of women leaving the profession, it makes you wonder, you know, you get to a point in your career, don't you? And then you're moving into that management and leadership. You know, it might all, tie in because um you know in a male dominated or traditionally male dominated industry um it's hard to be the only woman in the room for some of us um and then to become a leader as a woman um sometimes you know changes that dynamic so more that needs to be done and i suppose with your mentorship stephanie and what you're doing that work you're doing with women hopefully we'll see that um figure start to improve Stephanie, how can we encourage more women to become innovators or inventors? So I think exposure is a big thing here. Um, if you have never had a mentor who is an innovator um, or an inventor, if you if you've never like seen that, it is hard to become something that you cannot imagine. Um, Paris was talking about how her mom encouraged her. Um, so I actually have two parents who are scientists. I, engineering was not my first, uh, in the United States, you don't have to pick to go to college. Engineering was not my first major. <laughs> I was actually a science major before I was an engineering major. Um, but one of my parents has patents and has invented things. So like I was exposed to this. Mm -hmm. And I realized even when I got to college and talking to my engineering friends that a lot of people hadn't, uh, haven't been exposed to this and hadn't been exposed to the idea that like part of inventing things is failing and a willingness to try something knowing that it's not going to work. You know what Einstein took a thousand tries to invent the light bulb. And I feel like there's this, you know, there's this pressure as you're coming up to get the perfect grades, to get the perfect scores, to get the perfect jobs. And so like, I think part of encouraging women, especially, you know, before, even before they get that exposure is creating places where it is safe to fail and to learn and not you know punishing people for oh you don't have the perfect test score or you know you didn't do everything perfectly um i think that changing that narrative is critically important to seeing more women or frankly any any gender <laughs> to see what's to see more inventors yeah. because that's just part of the failing is just part of that process yeah that's more work that we can do from a young age as well the the fear of failure and yeah Absolutely. you're not going to get it right first time and that applies to so many elements in life um okay stephanie i know you've got to run paris i've just got one more question for you so we'll say thank you so much to stephanie thanks, thanks for giving stephanie, us your time honestly you. yeah Bye. so grateful um so yeah have a great day and thank i'll you. see you soon Hi. So Paris, we'll we'll finish up in a few minutes. I just yep. really wanted to talk um, about the awards that you have recently won. Honestly, so you've won you've won two awards: highly commended regional winner of the National Apprenticeships Awards and the Apprentice Apprentice category of the Midlands Women in Tech Awards. Congratulations! Thank you. Thank How did it feel? Um, quite surreal. Um, I'm not going to lie. The Apprentice Award was kind of my um cohort leads at work saying oh you've done a lot in the apprenticeship space nominate yourself so i did and i actually nominated myself um and got nominated for a different award that i won which was only a couple of weeks couple of weeks ago now which is a other story when i submitted my application for that they messaged me saying apply for the women in tech one so that was the multicultural apprenticeship award 
which is amazing and Prenship Awards. I won the engineering and manufacturing category. I'm gonna send you the um, information on that. And they they had other categories there on the night, so like accounting and finance, law, and all these things, and all the winners of that went into win apprentice of the year. And I won that as well, which is honestly, when I speak, speak about it, it's just so surreal because I did not expect it whatsoever. I've been doing a lot of this, and I'm just very, very grateful that I now have this, these achievements to be able to go out there and tell people you can really do things, especially with the Mid Midlands Women in Tech, because there were so many inspiring women in the field, in that room, so many amazing companies that were diamond sponsors that it's like, actually, it, that really motivated me to kind of do kind of create almost kind of like a career plan once I've kind of finished five year plan or whatever but it's just insane the amount of recognition that you can get if you really kind of put your mind to it so I would my my thing would be like if you're doing some things that you want to put yourself at average to speak to team they can nominate you you can nominate yourself for a lot of these awards there's only certain awards when they get like proper prestigious stuff you're obviously not allowed to nominate yourself for mm -hmm. but it's almost one of the ones where when you're doing that kind of above and beyond, definitely getting that recognition for it. Because now when I'm speaking to people at schools or um, social media, people are messaging me kind of like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. How did you get into it? And it's because of that award that people are interested. So it literally, it's not the award and it's not the kind of um, status and um, not fame, but like notability, notability that I do it for. I do it so that people can kind of see and then come to me and help if I help one person, two people, that's what really kind of like matters. So it really puts me in that place to have that platform to go out there and make a difference. So I'm so, so grateful for all of, all of the award organisers that and the judges that um, felt like I deserved t to win. I don't really have it. I don't even know what to say because it's just so... No, so I think you've made, kind of, you've made some great points. It's the exposure, isn't yeah, it? It's that exposure definitely. and then the platform. But because you're already giving back so much and and so you're so passionate about helping um other people which really really comes through and it's so refreshing and what's really interesting in the work that we've been doing at jobs for women is that the, the people that we're speaking to have this deep rooted passion to help other women mm -hmm. and to to make change so yeah those awards have given you that platform haven't they to, to help so to reach out so many people have reached out kind of on oh, what's this apprenticeship kind of what are you doing what it is and it's like me helping other people is kind of why I do what I do because when I was applying there wasn't much help and it will just make it easier for the next generation of people that are going to be the future leaders of the companies coming in so I am definitely very grateful that's why it's been so busy and hectic the last couple of months <laughs> definitely oh, yeah hectic hectic so if if anyone out there is interested in applying for the course that you've mm -hmm. done what what's what what way would they get in so the specific course that i am on is digital technology solutions um you apply through the jaguar land river website um what are you able to do is you're applying for a job you're not applying for a university degree if you're wanting to go to uni as well, there's no harm in doing that. Still create your UCAS account, personal statement, etc. But look into the companies and apply through the companies. If you want any kind of help, reach out to me, connect with me on LinkedIn. I've got an Instagram account as well. I don't know if you're, if you're sharing details. I can give them to you yeah, yeah. to share. And like, reach out, get your CV up to scratch. If you want help with your CV, I'm happy to help with that. Um, and just kind of showcase what you can bring to the company, whether that's on a degree apprenticeship or whether you've already got your degree and you want to work for them as a grad, or you want to go into engineering or tech, and there's anything, like I'm definitely happy to help because um, but why not? I don't really see anything better to do with my kind of spare time than speaking to people because it's really, you get that experience. They learn from me and I also learn from them because it's new generations coming in that have different mindsets for everything. I've learned so much from speaking to people. But yeah, my specific one is on the website, Applications open in January, just a small plug there. Um, if, you want to apply, <laughs> if you want to apply, um, but if you want to apply to any degree apprenticeship or any kind of STEM program, usually go on um, like their website and type in, get a real feel for the company. And once it comes down to interviews, just really be yourself and show kind of what you as an individual are going to bring to the company rather than kind of um, prepping any kind of interview questions go there do you research on what the company goals are what the company strategy is and really align what your questions are saying with what the what what it says on their website and um, that's, that's great my, advice that's my advice yeah it's really key that advice isn't it because mm -hmm. something that I remember when I was in the early stages of my career sometimes didn't do the basics like that mm -hmm. so that's really yeah, good advice yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for joining me, thank Paris. Honestly, me. I was honoured that you that you. I know you're really busy, um, and you've got assignments coming up at Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I'm really grateful. I think thank you've you shared some amazing advice. Um, I'll add all of your details um, mm -hmm. so people can connect. Um, and then you've obviously given the details for when the uh, apprenticeship opens. So thank you so much. I can't wait thank to you. see where your career takes you and hopefully you. you'll join us for another session. Yeah, maybe yeah, next if you ever need any, any support with anything else and I have time, I definitely will make myself available. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. See you have soon. A good, have a good day. Thanks, everyone. You bye. too. Bye.